One of the more interesting recent developments on the internet has been the rise of so-called cryptocurrencies, of which Bitcoin is probably the most famous and the first. So what is Bitcoin? Um, Bitcoin is a digital distributed currency. It uh, meets the requirements of a currency system in ways that are very different than how they're typically met today. So there are, there are requirements that have to be met in order for money to actually have value. So you might wonder, why does this dollar bill in my pocket have value? Why can I use it to, uh, why can I exchange it for goods and services? For most currencies, the reasons that they have value come down to essentially national power strength guns and black helicopters. So, for example, if I could set up a printing press to make dollar bills in this building, let's say, now obviously the government, US government and other governments make it difficult to do this on purpose, but if I could do that, let's say I can somehow set up a printing press that makes dollar bills that are indistinguishable from the ones that are produced by the Treasury Department, I'm not going to be able to do that for very long before the uh, Secret Service shows up uh, with their weapons drawn and I'm going to be in trouble. So to some degree, one of the reasons that money has value is because there are for there's force that is required to enforce the value of that currency. What's fascinating about Bitcoin and other digital currencies is they managed to do this without some sort of central powerful authority that has an army. So Bitcoin has value. You can go out today and you can use it to buy things. You can accept it as a form of payment. You can exchange it for other currencies. So you can take Bitcoins and convert them to dollars and you can use dollars to buy Bitcoins. Um, and it has managed to maintain its value without any sort of black helicopters or, or, or men with guns. Um, so that's really fascinating. Uh, the technical details of Bitcoin, I'm certainly not going to be able to cover in five minutes, but I would encourage you to look at it. Um, if you understand hashing and you understand um, sort of a little bit of the basics of how distributed systems work, you're pretty much ready to understand how Bitcoin works. And you know, you might think about some of the common problems that a currency system, particularly an online currency system like Bitcoin, has to handle. So for example, in a distributed currency system, how do I ensure that somebody doesn't use the same virtual dollar or virtual uh, currency twice? And this is a problem that Bitcoin solves, along with a variety of other different problems that are required to produce a, a currency system. So I think it's a really interesting testament to the power and the reach of the internet that we can actually use internet technologies and use sort of distributed systems to start to replicate some of the core functions of governments and of entire countries. So one of the primary functions of the US government is to maintain the value of dollars. If the value of dollars somehow you know, went away, um, the entire society would crumble. I mean, nothing that you got paid would be worth anything. Nobody would know how much money they were supposed to accept for a particular product or service. Everything would just totally go haywire. And so somehow using you know, very elegant cryptography, um, Bitcoin is an open source system, which is really interesting. So people can validate, a lot of people have looked at it. Um, but using these tools, we've actually managed to recreate an entire currency system. So that's actually pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so go online, find out more about Bitcoin, maybe try uh, purchasing some Bitcoins and using them. Uh, there are now a lot of different um, online vendors that uh, take Bitcoin in various forms for different types of transactions. So that's kind of fun. It makes you feel futuristic to use Bitcoins uh, to, to purchase something online. Um, Bitcoins have an advantage, which is that because of the technology behind them, rather than sort of the requirement of, of some sort of national power, uh, the transaction fees that you pay to use Bitcoins when you purchase things and the transaction fees that merchants have to pay are much smaller because a lot of the, the work of automating, the work of va verifying the transaction and things like that is completely automated. Automated. Um, so anyway, you know, Bitcoin is an entire fascinating system. You can teach an entire course based on Bitcoin and, and the type of impacts it's having. Uh, but it's certainly something that is extremely interesting to think how this is going to evolve in the future. So if we start to be able to replicate core functions of governments online on the internet in a distributed system without any centralized control, what sort of core functions will governments need to perform in the future?